What do you want to lose weight for? Only 5% people are able to keep it off. I mean, you've got a 95% chance of failing. Thank you, Karen. You can leave now. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I got some flying squirrel action there, too, didn't you? <laughs> All right, so hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for clicking that link and joining me today. So, my way in today, and look, I'm in the trailer again. No barn for me today. I have to change the name of the channel, won't I? Um, anyway, so my way in today was 224, down a whole pound. <sighs> I know I feel so discouraged, but a pound is gold. I, I, I have to remind myself, a pound is gold, no matter what. Because that's 3,600 calories. I somehow either did not eat or burned enough calories to, to get rid of 3,600 calories. <sighs> okay, so this week was a little rough. Sorry, I'm just reading my notes. This week was a little rough. I had a, a soda and chocolate. And then I also felt sick again. And like I said, because my, my trip to Sweden's coming up and I know that I am probably going to feel sick some more. So I'm not enthused. But we were coming up from the valley and I also drank like an entire little bottle of Pepto-Bismol to keep from having to pull over to the side of the road. So it was, that was rough. This is probably why I'm, I lost a pound because <laughs> I was sick. Can't rely on the flu to keep you thin. Okay, so with, with all my fun stuff, the, you know, being silly and stuff like that, today is a more serious downer of a topic and I apologize but I feel like if you are you know forewarned you're forearmed you know what to expect so there's been like a rumor mill going on talking about how they're gonna bring back the biggest loser what's going on Joel? where's your head something is holding you back that's what we have to look at Joel. I think that's my biggest goal, to know that. Why do you want to be here? It was the only thing that I knew, that I saw, second to gastric bypass, to lose 100 pounds. And when The Biggest Loser was on, I really enjoyed that show. Even though I probably should, you know, now looking back, I'm like, ew, you know, that was probably not good. You know, I it was inspirational, I think, uh, but I think at the same time, you know, looking back and definitely now, knowing what I know now, it was not good. Not good at all. So I was doing research on some other stuff and stumbled upon this study that they had done way back in 2016. They did this study um, for a bunch of the Biggest Loser uh, contestants from season eight. And they discovered, and I'm going to link all the, the studies and everything below. I, I tried to wade through it. Um, but the bottom line is these, the individuals from The Biggest Loser season eight, um, they had discovered that their metabolisms, like literally their metabolisms had slowed down to where they had to eat, I believe they said like four, no, 500 calories less than a person of the same size. So that would be like me having to eat 500 calories less than I do now to stay as fat as I am. So I, I was really kind of, it's, it's very disheartening. You know, I, I'll be honest. I was pretty, pretty, you know, sad pretty sad, especially for them, you know, because it's not their fault because most of most of them, I think, have gained the weight back. And, you know, it's really sad and it's totally not their fault. And I know myself, like I lost a ton of weight and I gained it all back. 
Um, but I wanted to cover them specifically because what had happened with them is they actually did somehow manage to damage their metabolism and to where to the point where they had to eat less, eat all that, you know, less. And I know that a lot of people tell you that your metabolism slows down when you lose weight and they're kind of right because your resting met metabolic rate does slow down, but that's because there's less of you. But it seems like with the Biggest Loser contestants, that's not the case. It seems like it's r legitimately from the study. I tried, I tried to disprove it. I tried, but I couldn't find anything that disproved this study from the Biggest Loser linked below, stating that their metabolism had slowed down and they had to eat less calories than a person the same size. So, yeah. Um, and and I, you gotta remember, you gotta remember that these folks were on a crazy weight loss show where, you know, they lost, you know, a hundred pounds and like hundreds of pounds, not even just a hundred pounds, like hundreds of pounds in six months. You know, they did, like, they worked out like eight hours a day and they probably, I mean, there were rumors about the show, um, you know, giving them drugs or I know that they gave them electrolytes and stuff like that. I mean, there was a lot of stuff going around about this show. So you, what you can say is that they're an anomaly. They're definitely an anomaly. So you, you, us, as the average person trying to lose weight, we're going to be the norm. So we're going to lose weight and we're not going to have that happen, theoretically. I mean, yeah. Because they were on a crazy weight loss show and there's no way. There's no way that we're doing eight hours of cardio. There's no way we're doing all this crazy stuff. You and I, as normal people, we're lucky to get two hours a day. We'd be lucky to get an hour a day at, of cardio or weightlifting or whatever we're doing. You know, it's literally, it seems almost like, you know, what I can surmise from the data is it seems like losing weight slower is better for you because it gives your body an, a, a chance to adapt to what you're doing. So I would say if you have stumbled upon that research, don't, don't take it too hard because they're anomalies. Um, <laughs> so that, that was my news. Um, and really this had come up because I was trying to research the, the 5% because there's a, it's, I think it's untrue. I think it's untrue where they say only 5% of people um, who lose weight are able to keep it off. And I really feel that that is incorrect. I'll tell you why. Because if you go on YouTube, you see a ton of people. There's like Obese to Beast and um, Jordan Shrinks and a whole bunch of other YouTubers that have lost weight and have kept it off. Um, and I think it's possible. I, that's more than 5%, I think. And so I started digging around and that's how I discovered this Biggest Loser um, study. And, and I just want to tell you guys, just don't worry because I, I believe it's because they're an anomaly, you know, because somebody like Obese to Beast can keep the weight off, Jordan Shrinks can keep the weight off, and a myriad of other YouTubers can keep the weight off. So you can too. And I have an article or not an article, a website you guys should check out. Um, the National Weight Control Registry is what it is. And the bottom line is nobody has ever done a study. They did, they did the study. They did the study of the 5%. And that was a study of people who were morbidly obese. They were in a hospital. They were in a setting like that. So obviously they had maybe a few more concerns than just maybe trying to lose 10 pounds or whatever. And only five of those people kept, five percent of those people kept the weight off. Now, if you go to the National Weight Con Control Registry linked below, you will find a 
bunch of studies, a bunch of studies, um, just on different, different things, you know, just, you know, long-term maintenance of sustainable weight loss from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. I mean, it, it's, it's a goldmine of information. I encourage you all to go there and check it out. Um, but it, I think it does, I mean, now after I've given you the horrible news of The Biggest Loser, you know, bad news first, I, th I think it does illustrate how people can lose weight and keep it off long term. Um, you know, and the, these are people who've self-reported, so that data could also be kind of false because, you know, it's focusing just on people who are self-reporting that they have lost weight and kept it off. So I think somewhere in between the number, I think it can be done. I don't think it's as low as 5% because I know people who want to sabotage you will come up and be like, what do you want to lose weight for? Only 5% people are able to keep it off. I mean, you've got a 95% chance of failing. Thank you, Karen. You can leave now. If people try to sabotage you with that, so I encourage you to go to the National Weight Control Registry linked below to to just check it out. Um, and there, a lot of people have reported being you know losing weight and keeping it off for more than three years, you know. And I think, and even one of the guys in the Biggest Loser study said that he kept the weight off for two or three years, and then it just came wailing back on. He just couldn't couldn't keep it, but he also changed his job and he had been working out a couple times a day, so I mean, on um, it's not really that different than your average person. You know, like if obese to beast stopped working out and stopped eating like he does, he probably would gain all the way back, you know, I mean I hope he doesn't. I don't think he will. And, you know, and, and same with Jordan Shrinks. I mean, she did one of her eat with, I don't know if it was an eat with me video, but like what I eat in a day videos where she, she realized that she ate actually a little more or at least the same amount of calories per day now as she did when she was heavy. It's just different because she's working out, you know, and she's keeping that weight off. So, you know, I think definitely the National Weight Control Registry is really kind of encouraging. It's got some really encouraging studies on there. I encourage you guys to read um, and just check it out and see, you know, that way you won't, you won't feel so, you know, hopeless when people come up to you and are like, well, did you know? You know, it, you do you, boo. I mean, you do your own research, you do your own exercise. This is all on your shoulders, your success or failure. Um, I'm only able to help you so far. Um, other people are only able to help you so far. You know, you're lucky if you have a gym buddy or somebody you can go with. A lot of people don't have that, you know, so definitely check this out. You know, it definitely will make you feel less alone and it will make you feel like that whole 95% of people fail thing is not true. And I don't believe that's true because I think a lot more people are successful at losing weight than we know because no one's ever actually done a freaking study on it, like an actual study. And I don't, I'm not sure how you would accomplish that because you have on one hand that one study of people that needed to lose weight and had issues and probably didn't want to be losing weight versus people who wanted to lose weight and did lose weight and have kept it off. So, I mean, somewhere in in between those things lies the truth, as with a lot of things. So, I hope this this video wasn't as, bad, wasn't as negative as it came across when I started doing it. Um, I hope it actually does kind of balance things out for you and encourages you. And with that, um, I hope that whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, whether it's get in shape, lose weight, read more, play, play a musical instrument, um, or just be a more loving and caring human being, I hope that you were successful at it. I hope that you have gotten at least, as Fallon Taylor says, 1% better today than you were yesterday. And if no one in your life, your real life, believes in you, I believe in you. I believe in you. You can you got this. You absolutely can do this. And I'll see you guys next week.